Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tio No The Last Days of Europe in which we're using the sub mod The East is Red led by an old or aging Mao Zedong but we're currently preferring big communes now but we gotta go through um, basically the, the end of last episode which I asked you whether we should or should not do understanding new types of warfare versus anti-military envisionism as well as proposal of Huang Ying as well as indicate of Kyong Zhu and overall at the time of this recording there is more support for between these two on the screen right now. More support for proposal of Huang Ying. Now regarding these two, there is overwhelming support for understanding new types of warfare, which we are going to go to next. So we're trying to get that as fast as we possibly can. I do want to get to recovery of equity quickly as well, um, but I would like to do all this if I like more growth. Uh, I want to get through all this as fast as I can, but I do want to get this one first, just because if we can. We get more daily political power, we change, of course, through service bar equipment to extensive conscription, better division organization, we get a lot less population, recruitable population fact, or recruitable population, which we go down to 0.7, which sucks, but, you know, whatever. Um, but you get better stability, worse per construction speed, factory output, research speed, so. As we enter the mid-1960s, we had a clear vision of the future direction of the PLA after a comprehensive study of the current situation in Europe, as South Africa, and other battlefields. The PLA must begin the process of professionalization and modernization as soon as possible and only uh, modernize. Strong soldiers can help us achieve our ambitious vision of restoring our rivers and mountains, of course, too. For cleanups, which I would like to do, but that's going to take so long that I don't want to get hit with uh, that weekly stability going down and weekly admin change going down, so... That's not what I want to do. So, wage system versus this one. Oh, also this one, wage system. Traditionally. Farmers think that all the grain collected from the land should be belong to them. However, after the collectivization of agriculture, the land is collectively owned, and labor is also collectively divided. So it's difficult for the farmer to define which field is theirs and which stone of grain is their own. As the labor motivation of each member was at stake, the commune management needed to settle for wages, assess uh, wage le levels, and issue fixed salaries according to the classes to avoid the proliferation of their erroneous idea of absolute egalitarianism among commune members, of course. So then we're also improving poverty here, too, um, but we will do this one next. Purchasing, marketing, and in unification, because as much as I want to get down here, the benefits are not bad. The benefits are honestly really great until you get really to the bottom. So, which this one is very good to do, but that's gonna take so long. The unified marketing and purchases are an effort by the party central committee to support socialist industrial construction. Common grain depots are required to sell surplus grain of the state at the central government's price, quantity, and variety. They can dispose of the unplanned grain by themselves after the surrender. The state plan ration systems. Uh, ration supplies urban residents. Non-state designated units are prohibited from selling without a permit, which is good. So, major voting issues as, um, what is this one? Slight reduction in GDP growth rate. Double slight reduction in inflation. Hosted the Town and Country Exchange Conference. A small increase in the degree of social development of agricultural technology. Uh, the effects of this proposal can be strengthened by major issue factory matching. Uh, the Strengthen effects is boost more GDP, add more inflation. Cadres do farm work, the young go to the countryside. More growth, okay. More uh, education, okay. D supply and marketing cooperation. Better agriculture, payment of labor allowance. Get 25 political power. Spend a small amount of reserves. A small increase in the implementation rate of minimum wage policy. Get 25 political power. Get 25 more political power. Clean and reorganize proletariat. The effects of this proposal can be strengthened by the anti economism movement. Get more political power and expand coverage operations, checking and registering, add a little manpower and a little stability. That's interesting. I like that. Encourage capital to forego dividends. Go into this three times. Get additional PU. Oh, I liked that one. Get additional PU as well. Enhancement of the living environment for the near factories. Okay, interesting. Implement or add a school and a hospital. Interesting. Eliminate landlords, the rich and counter revolutionaries. Get 100 PP. Yeah, so we had to go through a lot of stuff. So this is different. I like this. I like that there's different stuff here. This is really cool. Um, cost fewer PP. Release surplus labor, huh? Supply and marketing agency underwriting. Strengthening effects for boost more GDP growth and access to trace reserves. Well, let's go that one for now. Also, for the major issue, everyone pretty much loves it. Everyone literally supports what we're trying to do here, so... That's awesome. Yes. Ah. So major issue, huh? Breaking through the siege. Accelerate rural collectivization. Comrade Lee Kwang Gyeong. 
or invite comrade zoo and lad give the latest instruction. We wanted this one, so we'll give wait for that one. Um, accelerating rural calculization. Well, uh, Zhu and Lai, in the past, the scope of the free zone was not large. Xinjiang, Inner Mongolia, and Sichuan were not liberated. Our agricultural work was unsustainable in the then barren and dry northwestern plateau. And the overaggressive and over heavy collectivization that brought agriculture in the free zone to the lowest point. Good thing is that with the good progress made in the free zone, we think it's time to revive the old story and bring the proposal of accelerating this collectivization of agriculture back. Collectivization of agriculture is an essential feature of socialist agriculture culture. There's no significant loopholes in the idea of collectivization of the people's communes and with the historical le lessons learned at the beginning. We think we now have the experience and ability to implement collectivization in a steady and eff effective way. And the people's communes will play the great role we envisioned. No dissolution of senior cooperatives is the bottom. After passing this proposal, ordinary administrative cut the tail capitalism will be strengthened. Ooh. After cutting in this, uh, will be strengthened. It will spend 0.6 billion reserves on letting Democratic parties agree with the proposal. Peasants keep their native beliefs. Mouse that we cannot come from with reactionaries. Because this proposal annoyed the independent though disagreed to us. Well, um, I'm not sure. Let's save real quick. Maybe we'll get something good out of this. Um, I don't I don't want to spend any more money because we don't have any more money. 0.6 would be very close to 100% GDP to de debt to GDP ratio, which honestly isn't a major concern of mine, but still. Because they have 70 weight, 20 weight, 40 weight, 70 weight, 33% chance. Oh, that's not good. 35% is not ideal. Only we really support this, so doing that one probably is not going to be the biscuit for us. Um, we might do peasants can keep their native beliefs, and no dissolution of senior cooperatives in the bottom, so we might want to wait to do that one again, and, but we'll do the professionalization of officers. Modern warfare is increasingly complex and refined weaponry and equipment technology present a new challenge to our military. A strong army especially needs a large number of officers specializing in military occupations with high quality, with high quality to maintain operations. Um, which means that the professionalization of officers will be a critical path for a strong army. It must be promoted as soon as possible. Increase the local reserves by 0.6 million. So I knew we were going to spend money anyway, so that's why I want to get this one. Um, this one will get more attack and defense, which is pretty nice. Uh, monthly military professionalism change is looking pretty nice too. And it gets more military professionalism, societal development. One lesson. This tactic should have been the first time in the West Russian War that was applied to the battlefield by the Germans. Before the teacher finished speaking and recruited the bottom raised his hand, teacher, what is this West Russian War? Silly you, more than 10 years ago, the Russian defied the German devils and fought. Then it won. But they didn't say that the South Africa was at war a while ago, and where's South Africa? The participants discussed with each other, and even though the lecturer on the stage picked up the whip and kept banging the table, the discussions did not end. The lecturer quickly raised the volume. Silence, or all of you will be disciplined. Only then did the entire class remain in silence. It seems that many students are not quite sure what, we have, what would happen in the world around us, so let's change your thinking and start with these wars. The West Russian Revolutionary Front launched a West Russian war against the German Nazis. Long enough to go, but we'll do this one immediately. Instead of uh, professionalization of officers, just because that's going to decrease one level of hurt of the Great Leap Forward, which is super, super important to get rid of, but currently the ownership system of the People's Commune, in addition to the part directly owned by the Commune, also includes the ownership system of the production brigades and teams. It is the places, production brigades, roughly equivalent to the former senior agricultural production cooperatives, changing from basically production brigade ownership to communal ownership, as Chairman Mao pointed out, requires more robust economics in the Commune or a roughly balanced level of economic development of the various production brigades which requires a development process, but we were able to get this uh, done, um, the major issue with, uh, where is the voting? Uh, well, we can criticize them, but we can praise them too. Oh, we'll praise them, why not? Everyone loves us. Uh, but, yeah, over here, I mean, just really. Um, so basically, we went with this one, 33% chance to use faction would agree with the proposal. So, Mal's faction, Democratic, so they actually agree with us, which is actually really nice. So, oh, we can interact with them too. They do. Oh. Cause to temporarily elevate the faction to a level of influence within the group. Each round in Congress, you can only do this for twice in total. It'll lead to one increase in mental stress in Jackson Prime Minister. Frequent political maneuvering can lead to some unforeseen consequences. Oh. Get more votes. Well, I mean, we don't need it, so. That's why I was like, eh, we'll redo it. Oh, okay, so we can do some real good stuff. We'll wait for this one. Um. Factory demand. I really want to help out our power, but to increase the liquid reserves, increase their GDP by 0.1 billion is not bad in itself. Um, the central government currently does not object to the commune planning of the crops outside the guaranteed completion of the grain production program to improve the livelihood of the commune members. At the same time, the central government encourages communes to explore side businesses, including forestry, baths, orchards, uh, livestock farms, etc., making these enterprises 
an essential source of expanding community accumulation for cultural and welfare projects such as commonly run schools and hospitals. Not bad. Uh, factories demand. Every month, representatives of the state run factories go to the countryside and hold exchange meetings with the representatives and commune members, throwing demand and supply at each other and engaging them in direct material conflict or exchange. I mean, oh, of course, one of the following. Oh, Mark supply and marketing cooperatives an essential part of the people's commune as a transit point for transferring and exchanging various resources. Centralized purchase and sale of food pay, depend on the supply and marketing agency. And urban goods distribution depends on the supply and marketing agency. Which expand the functions of the market and the marketing supply and marketing agency, further develop the exchange of materials between urban and rural areas, promote cooperation as, as a center of the agricultural production movement, and support the industrialization of the base areas. Great boost disaster in Vietnam, oh boy. Decrease one level of hurt, which we really want. Great mandatory standards. The government of collective labor has laid a, a social foundation, or solid foundation, for the steady improvement of total grain production capacity, which is strongly support the supply of agricultural products in the base area, in the plains. The average acreage yield is striving to reach 100 kilograms. In the mountains, it's 35 to 50 kilograms. The proportion of wheat, millet, sorghum, etc. in grain production needs to be increased, and the absolute number of corn production, except in areas where cultivation is excessively concentrated, generally should not be reduced, and should also be prepared to replant to some potato crops when necessary. But I'm going to get this one next. This one's super good to do. Cancel three for one. Given the vast size of her base area and the existence of classes, various bourgeois, feudal, and decadent peasant ideologies are bound to emerge. The three for one work alone are the most prominent symbols as of now. The fierce class struggle has penetrated the part to eliminate the source of corruption wholly and immediately abolish the three for one in production. And we do have to be very careful of this because this, this costs a lot of money. So we can expand in templates. Because um, I do want to improve our military professionalism, but it just. Our debt's going to skyrocket a ton, so we don't have to do this as fast as we need to. So, um, as much as I do want to get this one done pretty much immediately, though, this one, well, actually, no, this one's not bad. We can still wait, and we can do that one first, and then keep beelining through all this other stuff here. Um, but uh, four cleanups. The problems will be solved by launching a social education campaign in the countryside. We're divided into two main areas, of course. One is to investigate and solve the new difficulties that have been arisen after the completion of agricultural collectivization. We coordinate the coexistence between communes and the economic problems that have occurred within the communes to clean up the various accounts since the establishment of the people's communes, to settle the old versions and establish new ones. The other one's the focus of the movement, clearing politics, economy, organization, and thought, class struggle, a grasp of the spirit, to counter our revisionism, and prevent counter-revolutionary usurpation of power. We should implement a long-term, extensive, and far-reaching campaign in rural areas to liquidate all kinds of reactionary tendencies arising from the three years of economic difficulties. So we'll get that. Uh, that's the spirit. Four cleanups. Ah, so we have to get through all this first before we get to this one, because this one looks pretty darn good. Uh, but right now, we can improve either the western downtown or southern downtown. School and hospital. Admin office. That gives us more political power. I'm all about that beepy man. Alright, so what do we have? We have another production unit. That's pretty nice. Uh, military factories or civvies. Well, we have... Well, hmm. We need motorized. We need to get, do it for the... Oh, uh, where did three of those up over? I do that one too. There you go. All right, cut the tail of capitalism. Accelerating rural collectivization, huh? Supply market of cooperative. Um, raise food requisition targets. What sounds? Huh. Of course, we're gonna praise ourselves. Of course, why not? Um, break through the siege. Well, I guess we can do this one too. Uh, Lentai, uh, King's Oh, we want this one. Yes. Everyone thinks it's okay. Ordinary resolution. Uh, factory matching. Oh. Increase growth rate, yeah. Uh, which one do we want? Allowance. Increase in the implementation of minimum age policy. Product launch. Uh, expand. Get more political power. Lateral stability is not bad. We don't get any more weekly stability, but that's not bad. Yeah. You know, I'll wait for that stuff. Um, this stuff doesn't really mean matter too much. How much inflation do we have actually? We have four point eight. That's pretty bad. Um, we get slightly less growth, but you get definitely less inflation. And you get double that. So, how does it work? Education. You know what? We 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 like education. The here. revolution lives. We've received a radio broadcast from Rakutsk in Siberia from a social regime known by as the Far Eastern Soviet Social Republic. The state is led by the former head of the NKVD, Genrik Kyogoda. While they boast the same policies and even government ministers as the old Soviet government, it's also unsurprisingly it appears that the NKVD appears a large role in the Far Eastern society, with the state police or a police state and surveillance being extensive. You go to claim that this is a temporary measure to perverse so preserve socialism in the state, and that it less than an NKVD grip on society once the situation stabilizes, but the question of whether to support an extensive police state with ties to the old Soviet government remains. Out of the depths of Siberia, the Union returns. 
Cool, we get good relations with them. That's all we get. As we're doing recovery of equity. In 1955, the gradual public-private partnership transformation of private industry and commerce began in the base area, and we acquired the management rights of most of the enterprises. The capitalists still received year-end dividends, i.e. turnover, for their shares without compensation, due to the United Private Policy during the economic difficulties. The central government did not terminate the contracts according to the tenure agreement, and this overhead continues to stay. To this day, now that there is no place for the old or new bourgeoisie in the general line of socialist construction, it is imperative to all of the private economy and lay the groundwork for the next step in the base. <coughs> More growth? Could you look at reserves? Good God, we need that. Industrial collectivization. In the late 40s, in response to possible invasion by the Wang Falls regime and air raids, the central government decided to evacuate industries from Xi'an, Zhenyang, Baoji, and Weinam. And since then, has experienced difficult turmoil, multiple turmoils, making it difficult for the central government to manage actual production in each area. Thanks to the end of the chaos, we can now have a clearer picture of the geographical distribution of factories and handicraft, handicraft workshops. We're ready to consolidate most in industries together and concentrate our economic strength. Which I am just trying to avoid this. Because this one, minus 0.1, because we don't get any weekly stability. Oh, we get plus 0.7 change. Oh. Oh, we get that one then. But admin change goes down. Now we go through, rush through this stuff. We can get all these unlocks to help us with all the other ordinary um, issues that we can pass, but. Um, industrial collectivization and uniform production standard to the countryside. Yes, we'll do this one immediately because this hurts or decreases one level of hurt for the Great Leap Forward. Even. During the Great Leap Forward, scattered industries still absorb more laborers than planned, with four, more than 400,000 people employed in state-run factories in Sichuan, or Shangxi province alone. <coughs> Many employees. Well, the labor sentiments became idle. In contrast, there is more demand in the countryside, and these people should be called upon to build socialism in the country, to be re-educated by the peasants, and to exercise themselves. Uniform Production Standards The transformation of the public economy for the base is broken has broken the industrial barriers. The future bottom may have to oversee dozens of hundreds of enterprises to produce together. The degree of socialization and production is getting higher and higher. The technical requirements are more and more complex. And production collaboration will become more extensive. Therefore, production standardization, standardization of social production activities, and adoption of unified scientific and rigorous production guidelines are fair. Fair? Rare. Fair. Well, what does fair mean? But hey, poverty is getting better, slightly. Uh, we have 0.3 billion, not much. But, hey, lowered uh, debt to GDP ratio by 10%, basically, so that's just not bad. It didn't do 10 tax hike, but still. All right, so we go over here, because it took capitalism, huh? Which is why I wanted to go through all this stuff as well, um, just to see uh, what we could, like, improve upon. Uh, let's close this up, because this one is this. Completing, completely outlawing personal business. Um, industrial collectivization and uniform production standards. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, goodness. Uh, this one costs 50 PP, which I didn't realize earlier, but that's good to know. Uh, clean up class ranks. Ooh. Expand pro product launch. Small amount of reserves. Spend amount of reserves, I mean. Checking and registering household registration. So we have all this stuff. Major issues. Probably out of personal business. Oh, 33% chance. Spend 0.6 billion. Now the effect of slightly easing union policy restrictions. 50% possibility that they'll do this. Well, if it doesn't go well, it doesn't go well. Um, they don't get any parties, they're only 40% weight. If we do this, it's only 10 PP. We have 55%, which means it should pass, right? It should pass. We're very uh, democratic here, yeah. Totally democratic. Um, power, stability, we're looking, oh, they did go down on this, just a little bit, but whatever. Go class ranks. Um, which one do we want? Cause, I don't have, we don't have a lot of, you know, money. So increase GDP growth. So basically 0.1% more growth in GDP and 0.1% more inflation. So. And basically same thing there. But it does cost 50 PP. Increase, increase inflation, inflation, GDP growth, small little bit of money. Because they have capitalism. Really want to reduce inflation, but let's go with instead, let's go with this one. Yes. Because if you come over here, this is where you can read it. Oh, oh. well, at least this one. Oh, no, increase by 0.2. Oh, that's better. 0.2 increase for growth. 0.1% increase for inflation. Increase liquid reserves like we just did. And agricultural society development slowly increase. Nice. To the countryside. Uh, we can do that one too. Um, uh, factory community construction. Or we can just go through all this stuff and get all this stuff on pass and done. And then get this one as fast as possible. So, oh, this one's pretty good too. So let's go to the... One on the right side. Five percent's not bad, but trying to get beeline to this one would be better. So, factory construction, community construction. The factory, our community, or urban people's commune, will become an instrument for transforming the old city and building the new social city. 
a unified organizer production, exchange, distribution, and people's welfare, and a social organization that unites the government and the community. It's organized under the leadership of the party committee and active sponsorship of massive workers, with the workers, families, and other working people as the main body and all others who volunteer, uh, par uh, voluntarily participate. It is centered on organizing production and simultaneously organizing various communal life, welfare, and service undertakings. It can significantly change the face of the city, especially the vast number of homemakers. Awesome. Slowly improving everything that we have here. 0.2, 3.1. Uh, where is it for um, this one? Arts policy. That's pretty decent. I like that a lot. Uh, great hurt of the Great Leap Forward. Thanks to our efforts, the economy of the base area has actually improved. So it's looking a lot better than when it first started. So it's not great still, but that's not bad. Ireland crawls back to her former masters. Oh well. Um, so point one is not bad. 3.2. Hey, look at that. Just a big old drop. I like it when it drops. Um, providing PPE. For the workers, labor protection is a fundamental guarantee for the health maintenance, work, efficiency, improvement, and labor value creation. Various labor protection measures are developed to prevent work-related accidents and various occupational diseases according to the survival and development of the local economy. Lost all products launch. The economic situation gradually improved and enriched a variety of urban residents' consumption in the proletarians' daily life of food and clothing. The central government decided to unblock the list of goods available on the shelves of the state store in Baoji and the second state store in Zhangyang, several people's favorite goods. The government will issue shopping cards to the residents and the standard of issuance up to a household of each one. Then each household resident is allowed to send one person with a card to enter the state store shopping according to the population ration. Uh, let's go with that one first. And then end the three major differences. Yes. Chairman Mao believed that in a socialist society, after the socialist transformation, we completed the ownership of the means of production. We must highlight proletarian politics. A new relationship must be between people and production and labor must be gradually established and developed. We must eliminate the differences between workers and some peasants, between urban and rural areas, and between mental and physical work before we can finally complete the construction of socialism, prevent the restoration of capitalism, and lay the foundation of power for the liberation of the whole country. Strike hard against crime. Many young and robust laborers were stranded in urban factories, institutions, and schools during the Great Leap Four period. Some of these Harmful, idle elements began making a living by breaking the law. These hooligans, with the arrogant idea that serious laws are not violated, but ordinary laws are always violated, have caused a significantly harmful impact on the social atmosphere and law and order. And women dare not walk at night, and parents dare not dare let their children go out on the street. The central government has made up its mind to rely on the masses of people to eradicate these black sheep. Ah, that's what I thought. Still looking okay. These guys dissented. Um, get 25 pp. Yeah, plus ranks. No nope, nothing. Oh, oh, yeah, we have this one too. Act it, implement three times. Spend a small amount of reserves. Add a school and hospital. We don't have a lot of money to go around. Let me try it once. Let's try it once. Hey, we got that one doing too nice. Give it a day or so. Maybe not. Oh, I just want to see what it, what, it, what it would have done. The major issues now. Release the surplus labor to rural areas. And mm. electricity should go to the countryside for gaining independence. 20, which is nothing. 40 is not, not bad. Long overdue to clean up these urban, uh, urban aristocracies. Ooh, that's not good. So we'll have to look at that again. <clears throat> that's really bad. But, oh well. You can't win every single one, and we'll try to. Uh, Anti-only economism. Many workers under the spell of the reactionary organization Workers Club attacked the party central committee at the most difficult economic time in the base area, ambitiously de denigrated the general line of socialist construction under the leadership of the chairman Mao, which was severely criticized at the time. <clears throat> Whether the workers' demands were correct and whether the labor system was reasonable could have been studied. However, at the beginning of the climax of the socialist construction, the reaction was throughout the bait with the econ economist slogan of reduced working hours and increased wages, seriously disrupting the economic construction work in the base area. The revolutionary organizations such as the Xi'an Labor Union and the revolutionary proletariat had declared to draw a clear line with them and angrily denounced this bourgeois trend for cleanups. The problem to be solved by launching a socialist education campaign in the countryside were divided into two main areas. One is to investigate and solve the new difficulties that have arisen under the complexion or the completion of agricultural collectivization, to coordinate the coexistence between communes and the economic problems that have occurred within the communes, to clean up the various accounts since the establishment of the people's communes, to settle the old versions and establish new ones. The other one is the focus of this movement, clearing politics, economy, organization, and thought, class struggle, grasp of the spirit, to counter revisionism. <clears throat> 
and provide counter-revolutionary usurpation of power. We should implement a long-term extensive and far-reaching campaign in rural areas that liquidate all kinds of reactionary tendencies arising from three years of economic difficulties. Anti-waste. During the Great Leap Forward, the working group went to the countryside and found that the organizers of the senior commune didn't know how to run the business and wasted food and materials at will, thus aggravating the labor appointment among, among the society members and the central government. <clears throat> I decided to put an end to this phenomenon. Anti-corruption. Anti-corruption is an essential initiative against corruptive elements, along with the liberalization of the economy after the Great Leap Forward. Some cadres are corrupt, and with some now being bribed to become accomplices of counter-revolutionaries. With just three pounds of pork and a few packs of paper cigarettes, must be, and must be dealt with severely. Anti-bureaucracy. Bureaucracy has been a persistent problem in the future society, even for us. It is necessary to launch an anti-bureaucracy campaign and crack down on the cadres who have adopted the habit of officialdom. Uh, Anti-revisionism. Where? Oh, oh, oh we're gonna, oh, we gonna do this next, but eat it in the canteen. Master Zhang, you come over here. Zhang Yu Yijing was busy working on the stove and heard someone call him. He turned his head to see. The president of the commune, Qin An, called him at the back door, so he put down his hand and let oh, his disciple take over the cauldron himself. Uh, himself, a wash hand, wind, and fire too also. President, do you come to me today? Well, request, you can tell me. I can help. Uh, nothing. I came to ask all the community canteen food, after all. Ask how it is. After all, I usually eat my loved ones cooking. I do not know if the food is uh, to taste rich or not. Lao Zhang heard President King Kin ask his question th and thought it was to praise his work results and said, President Kin, don't worry, we can eat enough rice, but every day there are some leftovers. There are leftovers, but today there's a touring group in town to check the problem of the catering waste. Kin An shook his head and Zhang Yu Jing's heart uh, felt like it eaten a soft hammer. Seemed like this. President Kin patted his chef with a big bladder and thick neck and taught him. And taught him you dump the recent leftovers into the vegetable garden first. It's not a difficult problem, but the food can't be wasted either. How about this? Today's reception meal is to eat in the lobby, make a meal of the four dishes, and one soup is fine after this arrangement of food. Once you heard the solution, Master Zhang also began to help President Kin think about the problem. Then you said uh, uh, that the ingredients procurement costs, uh, according to the standard, four dishes and one soup. It's certainly not spending so much than this extra money. Oh, this is something you do not have to worry about. I think everyone in the cafeteria is not easy. This money you will go to inform the continent to subsidize you. I'm afraid certain cadres of model workers feel bad or not enough. When the time comes that people have a need, the small chef will be tired of making an extra plate, is all. Zhang even agreed. Zhang Zhujing felt that this matter had been agreed, and so to go back to the back kitchen to do. But Qin An pulled him, put also to his pocket, stuffed four cigarettes, and said to pour the leftovers clean with a soil cover porcelain, and then wash a bucket clean some. By the way, you also had to give me four bottles of wine produced here years ago. This kind of meal must be wine. I, I must also have to go to the labor point with the community members to speak clearly, as to not reduce the, the meal, this thing to blame on you. Today, you also worked hard. It's alright, I'm thrifty and hardworking, I'm following the party central committee. Anti-revisionism. Where do people get their correct ideas from? And social practice. The theory practices of social production struggle, class struggle, and scientific experiments. And many of our senior and middle level cadres have forgotten the class struggle. This is not good. Leninism and Bukharanism were also two knives that could be used to fight the enemy. But the Russians have thrown away both. And some of them have even taken them up to destroy the Soviet Union. This is the, re the result of Bukharan's in attention to the revisionist tendencies in the party, which led to the emergence of such counter revolutionary ambitious people such as Vasilevsky and Tukhachevsky. Chairman Mao did not want the party to go about learning from such people, to vilify Bukharan, but to act on this social or actual situation. Ideology to defense, any bureaucracy, anti corruption. And we have no major reforms going on right now, as far as I can tell. Ah, launch of four cleanups. Oh, crap. If you disagree with me, I'll go to the PLA with a mound. The reaction is about to usurp the party. And it's necessary to unlock the following national focuses. Um, allow the pe people out of CPC advice for new revolutionary stuff. Oh, that's not good. That's not good whatsoever. But we gotta talk about not the people anymore. Quiet night. Two or three trucks carrying prisoners and soldiers drove onto the dirt road, rattling into the execution site. The end of this trip is not yet reached. Still, for the prisoners tied up in fives, today should be the end of their life process because they are all former party members who fell off the horse and lost the black hats during the three anti-revolutionary campaigns and are now political prisoners carrying counter-revolutionary crimes. Wang Zhao Gong, whose identity is described above, closed his eyes tightly and lowered his head to make himself leave, beyond the soldiers standing in front of him. Those guns and green military clothes, he just had to go and reflect on how he was sitting in his car. A week later, or a week ago, he was a Hangzhou City Municipal Committee member. Still in this critical period of cadres, he was responsible for all the things that happened. The city met to discuss municipal construction. So the construction team, funds allocated by the city, the burden of finding people fell on his head. He didn't have time to pick people to supervise the work personally, so he passed the matter to the following people to run errands. But also stuffed some hard money, the result of a start uh, to dead. 
The foreman brought the workers' families directly to the gate of the city government with bloody clothes to ask for an explanation. He had no choice but to use good tea and good words to grind people away. Coincidentally, the sand mining work also happened. Sand mining team in the downstream in sand mining, but some people did not want the river to be occupied by as the theory, and as though it was a fight of human life. What's worse is that two things happened together. Two groups of people came to the city hall together. He was annoyed. Forced the security guards to disperse the crowd, resulting in an older man stumbling to the ground and going to heaven. Wow. Finally, they arrived at the execution site, but Wang Xiaoguang, to the bullet to his head, opened a hole and did not understand why they were so unlucky. The player can't see most of the game. Thoughts never end. It was raining heavily today. It's not easy to have such weather in Xi'an. Usually, they're hot or dry and cold. It can make a middle-aged man sitting in the room... Uh, this room feel like much more relaxed. Someone was knocking gently on the door. The woman who was busy in the kitchen went over and opened the door. And it turned out that the knocker was a young man with a little gift in his hand. Before entering the door, though, the young man spoke politely. Hello, aunt. The woman immediately recognized that this was her nephew, with whom she had not seen for many years. The young man had just entered the door, put the watermelon and porky bought to the table, and was about to ask where his uncle was when he saw the middle-aged man with a face full of vis vicissitudes come out of the study. The young man was so happy that he went up and hugged him. Xiao Guo, your uncle is the director of the police now. You do not need to bring things if there's anyone who created difficulties for you when you enter the city. Aunt's concern seemed a little uncomfortable for him, and Xiao Guo sat closer to his uncle and sat quietly. No. Auntie nodded reassuringly and took the watermelon and pork into the compartment. There are many things hidden in this room. Meat, eggs, milk, fruit, tobacco, and tea. Needless to say, there's a large and heavy wooden box as to what is in it. No one dares ask. No one can answer. <clears throat> the family had a secret rule that guests bring things into this compartment. Auntie walked back into the living room and saw an old man and young woman chatting in the room. So she asked, what are you talking about? The hard times back then, our family did not have food, so we went to my brother's family to ask for it, and my brother shared the remaining rice with our family. After saying that, he also sighed. If not, we may have to starve to death that year, which we can still wait to join the Red Army. He turned to his nephew and said, son, your father's been good to me. I can't mistreat you. Today, it rained so hard, so don't go back. I will write a letter to your father later, saying that you want you stay with me first, and I will arrange a job for you. The next day, his uncle, the director, brought Guo to the Public Security Bureau and received a night patrol job. The night was done, and Guo's room was almost the only bit of light around. It finished out a large account book from the bottom drawer, turned to the back half, dipped it in ink and wrote a line, pork one, tail, two watermelons, nephew sent. In contrast, a look up at the account book is much more shocking. Three tails of gold, half a caddy of silver, a pair of jade bracelets sent by Director Wang, 150 kilograms of meat sta stamped, <clears throat> 450 kilograms of grain stamps, sent by a Section Chief Wang. Soon the door was smashed open, the pen in the man's hand was shaken and slid to the ground, and a group of police officers rushed into the study and surrounded him with red armbands with three anti slogans. Dr. Guo immediately dizzied and fainted. Incoming judgment. So we can't do this one. We need one of the following the four cleanups level one, two, three, or four, which kind of sucks that we can't do that yet. But we can always go to this one too. Expand the troop, uh, decrease the liquor reserves, which we can do, but that'd be pretty tight. But proposal of Huang, Huang Yin. Mr. Huang Yin, former leader of the Xing and Qing Gang region. <clears throat> Excuse me. Recently commissioned Comrade Li Kuang Jing Kuang to make a speech on the Kham Tibet issue at the General Assembly of the Political Affairs Committee, which is unanimously approved and adopted at the General Assembly. We believe that to break the blockade of the co-prosperity sphere, it is necessary to recover the Tibetan region and open up a land route to connect with India and then through the India to the other anti-Japanese imperial forces in the world. The Tibetan issue will become the primary focus of our current diplomatic efforts. So right now, um, we have a lot of debt-to-GDP ratio. Um, nearly just says okay. Growth is okay. We're working on inflation. Um, right now, we're also trying to finish off. Ooh, oh, that's one. We're going to lower our growth, but also increase inflation, which is really bad. We get a little bit more uh, reserves, but we get a whole another production unit, which is, I think is pretty decent as well. And we have 180 days to finish off Western Downtown, but mean Panchan. Uh, Panchen. According to the news from the Commerce Station in Xi'an and Tibet, the 10th of Panchen. Chos Kie Urigal Michan seem to express the idea of contacting and communicating with, with the front. So, where are we at for the great cleanup? Her Lord. Thanks to our efforts, the economy of the base is recovering every day, which is also looking pretty good down here, too. Agriculture is going to do very well. Reports from Sikyang, top secret. Uh, the party central committee instructed that the liberated areas in Xikang should follow the eight word <clears throat> policy formulated by Ms. Huang Yin to develop Sikyang, a national autonomy in the Azam with Tibet areas. The comrades in Sikang strictly followed the party central committee's instructions and Mr. Huang Yin's suggestions. After a period of governance, they stabilized the situation of the local minority people and started to carry out the plan of socialist transformation, which was generally smooth and stable. During work, the leading comrades in charge of Sikang were actively li liaison with the Tibetan Kashgar regime. They made unremitting efforts for the party central committee's vision of peaceful liberation in Tibet. However, the Kashgar authorities, the Dalai Lama, refused to accept the front's friendly proposals and repeatedly expressed dangerous ideas such as Tibetan independence and secession into diplomatic letters. We have not given up the possibility of gaining supporters from the top political and religious circles within Tibet. Through long-term contacts, we have gradually learned that the living Buddha lineage within Tibet is divided into two main lines, the Dalai and the Panchen. In the 12th year of the Republic of China, the Panchen clan had disagreements with the Dalai lineage. The Panchen went to the mainland angrily and set up the 
Ken Po Conference Hall Institution in Nanjing. A dispute between the two families had continued to the present day and is also so severe that it almost split Tibet. The Pan Chen currently resides in Zashilumpo Monastery in the Gizes Katse region on the south side of the Yarlung Zhangpo River. Now we still follow the instructions of the Lhasa side, still. We're convinced that the internal pressure of the Kash, uh, Kashagai regime is on the verge of culmination. So the party organization Sikang has proposed to the party central committee that it should actively liaise with the Pan Chen lineage in Giz Katse to make adequate preparations for the liberation of Tibet. Instructions have read, just do it. How the heck do we get the cleanups faster? Arts and policies, which is really good for us. Uh, special offers, four dishes in one soup, rumors of black hands. Uh, is it just a time-based thing, or do we just wait? Hurt. Military reforms. Got more army XP, which is nice. Uh, fierce land reform. Construction corps, Soviet experts, broken united front. Japanese blockade. Um, hmm. Yeah. Four national cleanups. Arm pilgrimage. After talking with the, the Chos Kyai Gal Chan, we learned that Dali and his second last side been making these things difficult for the Panchen and gets a cut. The Dali has even brutally and unreasonably prevented him from any followers from going to Alasa for Al Hajj. Perhaps we can arm escorts the Panchen to Alasa. Declaration of the Protection of Panchen Pilgrimage. Living Buddha back home. Right now we're 76%, which is not great. Um. Because we are trying to. Ooh. Yeah. Continue to praise him because I don't know. Let's see what happens. Ah, no issue. No major issue. We're really doing right now. Ordinary issues. Yeah, we're gonna need more trace reserves and whatnot. Um, living Buddha back home. Cho Suri Gyal San's home and Juna Zun Hua was not far from Jining. Where the secret meeting was scheduled, still the National Defense Front escorts did not seem to understand what the Panchen Master was thinking. And the black smoke imitation Toyota and military SUV just drove forward towards Jining. Just before we got off the bus in Jining, Panchen saw the bus and crowd welcome people. Um, with red flags on the roadside. Every three streetlights were hung with the slogans of Sino Tibetan unity, welcoming Panchen and unification of the motherland. And Panchen, who was only a young man in his 20s or 30s at this time, was still having trouble figuring out why the National Defense Front was entertaining him with such a flourish while the interpreter in his neighboring seat turned his head aside with a glowing face and said, Elder, the news of your coming was in the newspaper yesterday. Panchen woke up to the fact that the newspaper meant that the Dali and Laos would soon know about it and then, after a brief welcoming, uh, Welcome committee or meeting. Panchen was immediately sent to the meeting hall of the Jinin People's Government, where a group of PCP patriarchs from Zhu and Lai to Li Fushun seem to have been waiting for a long time. After the liberation of Tibet, it's necessary to give Tibetan areas a certain amount of autonomy. Zhu and Lai finished his speech. We believe that the Dali's reactionary ideology of Tibetan independence should be publicly condemned. Kang Sheng finished his speech. After entering Tibet, the PLA should be stricter in military discipline and the love of Tibetan land and protect the Tibetan people. Liu Bol Chang finished his speech. Panchen gradually felt sleepy during the time during the meeting to discuss Tibetan matters, and he, uh, one of the highest leaders in Tibet, was almost speechless at the meeting. Finally, when Li Fushun, secretary of the Kham branch, also ended his speech, all eyes turned to him. <clears throat> Panchen could only pile on a smile and put up, stand up with the interpreter. Don't look eyes at me. You have arranged for the future of Tibetan region in an early manner so that I, a visitor from Tibet, have nothing to say instead. After a short silence, Zhu and Lai spoke unheardly. What other opinions does the master show? I support the future unification of China by the PLA in Tibet, but what about the faith of thousands of believers in Tibet and the centuries-old legacy of Buddhism in Tibet? The crowd glanced at each other and it was still Zhu and Lai who smiled and spoke. It depends on you, master. Panchen, in the crowd and expectant or weary eyes, awakened to the tension in the front, nodded with a bitter smile, and then I will start preparing the sermon tomorrow. The theme is Buddhism and Socialism. Establish a secret link with the comrades in Hainan branch of the CPC. Interface affecting Southeast Asia is now available. Oh. Ask to the West. After the liberation of Tibet, we will have the possibility of contacting the Free India authorities. Despite being a member of the Co-Prosperity Sphere, Free India has traditionally been a small, independent kingdom not under the command of Tokyo, and they also own the ports of the Bay of Bengal region. This opens up the possibility of reaching out to other anti-Japanese imperial forces, as long as we're willing to offer some benefits to Free India, of course. Are we actually going to invade Tibet? That sounds like fun. That sounds terribly difficult, but fun. For now. Um, yeah, other than that, I'm just not sure. Completing ordinary administrative stuff? I mean, always praise him out. He's a guy to praise, you know? <sighs> Happy December, everybody. Happy December. Hope the debt does not explode too much. Oh boy. 0. 0.46, 2.46. Oh, 2.48. That's not bad. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, 77.1%. Not great. Growth is okay. Not fabulous. 
Declaration of the Protection of Punch and Pilgrimage. I love Mao. Um, the original text was published in the headline of Zhifang Daily. There are only two weeks. Uh, friendly talks. <clears throat> the Tibetan Buddhist leader, Panchen Chosri Rigal Mchan, highly affirmed the socialist work of the party's central committee in the liberated areas of the front and gave a detailed and complete discourse and a sermon on the theme of socialism and Buddhism. At the meeting with the party's central committee comrades, Panchen emphasized his firm support for the party and the front's anti Japanese proposition and expressed his willingness to do his best for the front's peaceful liberation and unification of Tibet. Oh crap, we go to war! At the meeting, Panchen emphasized that the mainland Tibetans and the Han and Hui people are by nature. Interdependent and all ethnic groups and a unified Chinese nation will prosper together and lose together. There's no possibility for each to stand alone. The Panchen pointed out that the Dalai Lama and Lhasa had ignored the great cause of resistance and unification, and has repeatedly spread the reactionary idea of watching him from the sidelines and remaining alone to the faithful, and even prevented the Panchen, who is a Buddhist leader, from fulfilling his obligation to go on a pilgrimage to Lhasa and secure appalling political persecution against pro Panchen people in Lhasa. It's against the tide of history, of course. Comrades Lu and Lai and Chen Yi, who attended the meeting, pointed out that the Dalai's actions had seriously infringed upon the vision of unifying China with all ethnic groups to expel the Japanese invaders and were intolerable to all ethnic groups, inadmissible to them, to socialism, and their disgraceful history. The party central committee uh, discussed and decided to send armed forces to escort the Panchen back to the Tibet to protect his reasonable religious obligation of well, pilgrimage uh, from being destroyed by the Tibetan separatists with ulterior motives. Nice. Um, uh, we need more military factories because we could use more stuff here, so... 311. We need at least one more. So for this one, we'll go with another military factory, but the next two will go over there. Be nice. Alright. Um, eliminate the landlords. Okay, so this one. It will strengthen the national deal. So this is going to be implemented four times. We have to get through all these. Maybe we should have done this one first, which sucks. But yes, 60 days. Jesus Christ, that's going to take so long. Eliminate the landlords of the rich and the counter revolutionaries. We get 100, 100 PP. Well, we're doing okay on political power, honestly. Like, it's not bad. That's pretty good overall. So I guess we'd have to just go in and kill them all off. Ask of the West. Uh, we don't have enough room here, really, for me to be comfortable. New operations manual. Um, I guess this one. The past war experiences and training methods have not been able to adapt to the needs of modern warfare. We well prepare many easy to read, progressive ideas, and flexible forms of war in the new combat manual for officers and soldiers. Going in, right? Good. Uh. Oh, you guys are in the war. There you go. Let's go there. Are they only five divisions? Is there, are, are all five all five divisions are down here. I'm okay with that. Victory in the southeast. That'd be nice. My god, the roads are gonna suck hard. But it is to be expected. Ah! Contact with the northern red states. What is this? Ah! Pay me the blood to return you to freedom. Chandra Bosa, who inspired all of India to fight against the imperialism of the world, was a brave soldier and proud son of India. He dedicated his life to his country and bathed the people of India in liberation and dignity. Now, hopefully, the comrades of the front will correct their attitudes, clarify our anti-imperialist position, and conclude a covenant with free India, which Bosa has led. Some independent states in northern India are being run by Indian communists, and our diplomats can begin with these comrades and gradually deepen their dealings with the free Indian government. Sure. Belated Consul. Perhaps it was a difficulty of tossing and turning, or maybe it was a difference in our choices, but in any case, the Hainan branch of our party finally established contact with us. The work of lettering Tibetan areas and contacting India had effectively ended victoriously. It was time for us to turn our attention back to this long-forgotten Southeast Asia. Nice. Request from Kyung Zhu. Ah, they're attacking us now. Beautiful. Ah, uh, poverty. Still over 90% of people live in poverty, which is unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. Ah, oh, they're starving and they won't actually escape, which is not good, but whatever. Both of you go right here. No, both of you go right there. No, I said both of you go right here. What? Why? Ma Indian magistrates? Through facilitation and mediation of our Indian comrades, we were able to hold a small consultation with the highest local governor of India to express a willingness to the front to stand with the free India against the Japanese invaders. Who needed money, right? Who needed money? Okay. And I can work. Ooh, we can get war taxes too. Oh god, that really kills. But that gave us way more money. Wow. We have like no growth. Secret visit to Calcutta. Nearly close surveillance by the Japanese, a sign of Indian talks that it would be kept absolutely secret from the outside world. The free Indian government has approved the secret diplomatic operation with China, and our diplomats were finally allowed to commute or communicate with the Free India Central Government. I love how fast is the movie, dude. Political answer. What's next? One day's left. 
Fu Zhu Yi is dead. A message from the underground party in the press areas. Fu Yu Zi has died in Tiao Nian, Taiyun, Taiyuan recently. And now Yan Shi Yan's cousin, Liang Hua Zi, is taking over as the chairman of Shangxi province. We're not focused on Shangxi. Hey, they all died. That's a lot of casualties. That's a lot of casualties, not gonna lie. Um, horse boys go. Um, we are. Oh, that's not good. Oh, we can't invest that. Oh, pay debt. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. They have their growth. Furthermore, following the previous planning of the party central committee, Chen Yi took off from the Chongqing airport and started secretly in Calcutta at the head of the diplomatic delegation. <clears throat> the simple purpose that they would make contact with Miss Lakshmi of the All India Forward Alliance and thus reach out to the central government of India. Despite being a member of the Co Prosperity Circle, even Tokyo itself was well aware that the Co Prosperity Circle had little so called influence or control over the Free India, which gave the Chinese Communist Party hope of reaching out to the outside world. <clears throat> Excuse me. The hot and humid climate of the Bay of Bengal was very uncomfortable to Chen Yi. But he still had to, had to amble off the plane in a military posture at the Calcutta airport and shake hands with L Lakshmi Sagar with a smile. The Indian woman, in front of him, was also very enthusiastic and started introducing Chen Yi to something at a breaking pace. A breakneck pace. It seemed to be the development of communism in India. Finally, Chen Yi sees an opening and, sweating profusely, spoke with a bitter smile. Karma must go to the hotel in Taksoli. Which is some consensus. Oh, look at this. On the surface. Indian negotiators did not deny our view that China and India were both victims of Japanese aggression, but they so explicitly and implicitly expressed their inner monologue of approval. In the face of the grave international situation, we fully understand that India's side plight, side plight of not being able to spill the beans. Now that we have gauged the attitude of the government of Free India, let our personal uh, make frank officers and ride out the storm. The Azad Hind government has made a commitment and never to interfere in our final war. That's cool. Sure. Yeah, this is... Making me a little troubled now. And we still have a deficit. Jesus Christ. Ugh. Terrible, I know. Do we do this one too? Do we praise, uh. Ow. 57%. We love praising him. 15 days left. And then. Reach out to U.S. Envoy. The government of Free India has graciously introduced us to the U.S. Envoy. We must take this opportunity to present to the U.S. the difficulties currently encountered at Free China, as well as to demonstrate the great benefit of Northwest National Defense Front to the U.S. Asia Pacific strategy. Yes. If you get some CIA money, what's not to love? I'm getting more political power here, too, but we need to focus more on our uh, GDP because, my God, it's not good. Of course, if we can ask to bet, that'd be great, but obviously, I don't think we can. I love Mao. He's getting old, but. He's doing a great job. Reports from Kyungzu. No, I don't really need that one. 67, of course. Um, better motorized? Oh, comrades in the party central committee. I've been working under the underground for more than 20 years. The work of the branch is now functioning normally. The enemy leader of Genna Minoru and other Japanese bureaucrats in my branch carefully discussed, uh, disguised and deceptive to Hainan have been put down. Now, a brief introduction to my unit in Hainan business situation. The Imperial Hainan Cooperation Maintenance Council, as a disguise, our branch has cultivated a wide range of intelligence networks and secret trade routes in Southeast Asia. Almost all Southeast Asian countries and even the U.S. military forces in the Philippines with our branch to maintain excellent trade, civil trade relations. In addition, our branch is in contact with the local anti-Japanese troops in Vietnam, Burma, and Cambodia. It is secretly supporting them. <clears throat> Among which the uh, Kanchin People's Army in Burma have built enough strength to raise a flag and deal a head-on blow to the Japanese imperialist dogs. Fortunately, the party's central committee has broken the blockade of the co-prosperity sphere, and work in the liberated areas has been fruitful. On the behalf of all comrades of the Hainan branch of the Communist Party of China, Bai Zhu would like to congratulate us, and will always follow the leadership of the party's central committee, and unswervingly abide by the instructions of the party's central committee on the situation in Southeast Asia. It's time to look to Southeast Asia. <clears throat> Red Forest. Burma, formerly a British Indian territory, declared independence after the war with the help of the Japan, but remains a puppet regime under the orders of Tokyo. We've learned from the Kyongya column that a revolutionary armed force called the Kachin People's Army have been operating in the eastern states of Burma for a long time and has been receiving secret funding from the Kyongya column for a long time. With their diplomatic work making considerable progress, the conditions are now ripe for an up uprising. Burma will be our first stop in the revolutionary storm in Southeast Asia. Heckin' land. Oh boy. Sources from the Khmer Communist Party say that the Thai infantry seem to be appearing on the battlefield of the Cambodian Civil War. Khmer Communist Party's General Secretary Salat Sot has sent a signal for help through Hainan. Although the situation in the Cambodian Civil War is far more chaotic than in estimation, we must still not give up this opportunity to dismember the Copa Spirit Sphere and immediately send more volunteers to Cambodia. Expand the troop. Since the days of the 8th Armored Army, we have been using guerrilla warfare to attack the enemy's rear to complement front operations. However, with the defeat of the frontal battlefield, the conditions for implementing guerrilla tactics behind enemy lines no longer exist in the foreseeable future. If we want to rekindle the beacon of resistance, 
resistance against Japan. We'll inevitably have to engage in frontal battles with the enemy in the southern plains and hills, which will require us to expand our existing establishment to meet the needs of the future aggression or future resistance against Japan. Now, we can do motorized regiments, but we, that'll make us spend so much money that we literally do not have right now. But from the perspective of the geography of the deliberate and enemy occupied areas, we'll be fighting mainly in central China, south China, and east China in the future. Who's gender terrain facilitates rapid deployment and deployment of motorized clusters, which places high demands on the mobile combat capability of our army and is urgent to enhance the motorized and mechanized level of our military. So we'll do this one too when we get to it, because we just finished level one. We level we need to get a level two, three, or four. And then new term, a capitalist builder. There are several severe and acute class struggles in both urban and rural China. After we completed the social transformation of the ownership system, the class enemies who oppose socialism tried to restore capitalism using peaceful evolution. The focus of the, of the socialist movement is to rectify those party, those and power in the party who have taken the capitalist road and consolidate further and develop socialist positions in urban and rural areas. So long as, as long as the party continues to implement the decisions of the party central committee on the socialist education movement more thoroughly and correctly, correctly, and grasp the outline of class struggle and the system of the battle between the two roads of socialism and capitalism, it would not be challenging to find another clear. Find and clear the capitalists. And of course, we read this one earlier too, but I think we'll end the episode here just to see what we can do. Also, we're, the Burma Civil War is fired, and we're just going to be doing this off screen probably mostly. So, other than that, I'm very worried about our uh, economy. But whatever. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we'll see what else we can do to help upset uh, the, the Japanese hold on China, basically. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.